Hello, my name is Masaaki Ogawa. I would like to introduce our work entitled Risk Responsive Orbital Frontal Neurons Track Acquired Salience, published in Neuron. Imagine you often visit Las Vegas to enjoy a casino. What would you like to do after dinner at your hotel? You would prefer gambling in a casino to having a drink with friends. However, through lots of experience, you know going to a casino is enjoyable but high risk. You could make or lose a large amount of money. By comparison, having a drink with friends is also enjoyable but no risk. The cost is constant. So, risk is one of the factors that distinguish these scenarios. Now, consider another option doing nothing at your hotel. Although not enjoyable as the other scenarios, this is also no risk. Thus, drinking with friends and staying in the hotel are not distinguished by their level of risk. However, they are distinguished by their level of salience acquired through experience. Indeed, this comparison is formally captured in a recent model of attention in associative learning proposed by Esbel and Hassel Group. This model links acquired salience to the prior association between an event or circumstance and multiple outcomes. As a result, it predicts that a risky event associated with both reward and reward omission is more salient than a non-risky, safe event associated only with reward. It also predicts that the safe event is more salient than an event associated with no reward when none is expected. So risk is salient, but salience can be safe. How might the brain represent these quantities? We addressed this question by examining activity of single neurons in the orbit frontal cortex, which has been shown to co-vary with risk and implicated in decision making under risky situations. We trained rats in a simple order cued response task in which four different order cues were associated with four different probabilities of reward 100, 67, 33, and 0 percent, respectively. During recording, rats responded more quickly and leaked more as reward became increasingly uncertain, consistent with the higher salience of these trial types. We next try to identify risk-responsive neurons during one-second outcome anticipation period. Here, risk was defined as reward variance, thus risk for 100 and 0 percent reward was 0, while risk for 33 and 67 percent reward was the same above 0. We collapsed activity across 100 and 0 percent or across 33 and 67 percent and then compared them. Population response of these risk-responsive neurons revealed that they do not track risk because if these neurons track risk, the response to 100 and 0 percent or 33 and 67 percent should be the same. What might then these neurons be representing? One possibility is that these neurons are tracking the heightened salience associated with both certain and uncertain reward as proposed by Esbel and Hazel Group. Indeed, the population response for certain reward is higher than the response for certain non-reward, and the response for uncertain reward is higher still. To systematically test whether orbital frontal neurons might track acquired salience better than risk, we fit linear regression models for acquired salience or risk to the spike count of each neuron during the outcome anticipation period. The critical regressors in salience model are CSUS and CSNOUS, 
as derived from Sdale and Hasselgrove model. CSUS is Q outcome associative strengths, while CS no US is Q no outcome associative strengths. This comparison showed that the acquired salience model was significantly better than the risk model to explain activity of orbitofrontal neurons. Importantly, this result shows that acquired salience is better explanation than mixture of value and risk, because we included not only risk, but CSUS in the risk model. In summary, the activity of apparent risk-responsive neurons in rat orbitofrontal cortex was better explained by acquired salience linked to the sum of Q outcome and Q no outcome associative strengths. Our result would substantially expand the understanding of the potential role the orbitofrontal cortex may play in associative learning and in neuropsychiatric disorders such as obsessive compulsive disorders, schizophrenia, and addiction. So thanks for listening. Please read our paper in Neuron for further details.